It all started from 12 years ago when I brought my young family to Charlottesville for my MBA education at Darden School. I had a transformational experience at this, the most beautiful campus in the world. And it changed my life. And we've been closely engaged ever since. Four years ago, I was back here in Charlottesville to attend the board meeting at Darden. I could not help but thinking what a life it would be if one day I can come back to live and work in Charlottesville while still commuting back and forth to China <laughs> to do something meaningful but also substantial enough to change the world. That all sounds like mid-age soul surge <laughs> because I was turning 40 that year. To me, it seemed nothing but a daydream. Back then, I was still a senior banker with Goldman Sachs based in Hong Kong. It's a very extremely fast-paced and packed metropolitan. And I was in the center of this prolonged financial crisis, battling every day. Speaking of banking, perhaps these are the classic images that would pop up to your mind. I think it's fair to say my personal career was not nearly as drastic. <laughs> but I certainly had my fair share of struggles and stress. Elephant hunting was a very popular buzzword in banking. And it certainly summarizes a popular mentality of the industry. But I always believed there should be a fundamentally different philosophy and model, as I call financial farming. It's all about cultivating relationships, building trust, and fostering sustainable win-win business. This was also part of my life. I was splitting my time between Hong Kong and Beijing. Most of my leading Chinese corporate clients are headquartered in Beijing, and most of my family were living in Beijing. This is a typical smoggy day of Beijing. Otherwise, it's a stunning, beautiful capital city. It's not just the air. Water is even the worst problem. We pulled off these images from the internet. It's really disgusting. On a recent water day, a report suggested every day that more than 14,000 people die from polluted water. And there is more than one billion people on the earth who do not have safe drinking water. And these are happening every day in China, in India, and in many other places in the world. And this is even more imminent. Deforestation. The World Wildlife Fund reported recently, every day, that literally 270,000 trees flush down the stream or thrown into garbage. And right now, actually by 2012, there are 6.2 million square kilometers of forests left on the earth. And that's down from 16 million a while ago. And in the recent 12 years, since 2000, there were more than 2.3 million gone. If we don't change it, given another several decades, there will be no forest left on the earth. 
It's not the way to be. Healthy forests are the lungs to the earth. It's essential to all the lives on the earth. Six, seven years ago, I encountered a group of grassroots, brilliant inventors and entrepreneurs from Shandong, China. They enlightened my heart from the very first moment we met. For decades, they've been investing everything they owned and everything they could possibly mobilize to develop a brand new technology. They basically turned the post-harvest straw into these very fine quality paper tissue and paper tableware product without cutting trees. And they also completely removed the bleaching process, therefore eliminated the, the toxic chemicals going into the industrial chemical bleaching. So all these products you see are natural light golden color. More importantly, they also turned the paper making residues in paper industry is typically called a black liquor with a lot of toxic chemicals. Now, by removing the bleaching and using straw fiber instead of wood, they are able to turn the residue into humic acid-based organic fertilizer, which has been tested for more than a decade in China. It's proven to be the best ever organic fertilizer in history. It helps to restore the black soil and help the roots to grow deeper and a stronger root system. Therefore, the plants will not only be more resistant to the diseases and to, to harsh conditions, but also it became more productive and the food quality became better. And there are more benefits. By removing the chemical bleaching, they also developed a very different uh, industrial wastewater treatment process. They take the wastewater level, the quality of wastewater, to a completely different level. So this is a picture taken at the uh, company's man-made wetland system. All the water here are from the wastewater process. Several years ago, this was half-sorted, deserted land. Just over several years, they are able to revive the system into a lively ecosystem. Now there are more than 50 wild animal species coming here, calling this their beautiful new home. So I fell in love with them. <laughs> and I thought, this is the way to be. And this should become global to benefit the entire world. But there, there was a huge gap. They have done extraordinary work to develop the company into a 10,000 employees company. But you look at the top 100 managers, none of them ever had the luxury to have an overseas educational or professional experience. They need help to take this global. And I saw a perfect fit of this with my unique experience, background, expertise, and my passion for financial farming. So after advising them for three years as pretty much a volunteer, I decided I should jump in onto the driver's seat to lead taking this global. I left the Goldman Sachs. I joined them as the chief strategy officer for the group. We spent a number of months to carefully examine and formulate our going global strategy. In July 2013, I came to the US. I started a nationwide search for the site, for an ideal site to build our factory 
in the U.S. Six months later, we started a close focused search in Virginia, and we founded Chuanling Inc. Now it's also named as Vasily. Five months later, in June 2014, this is Jefferson Hall at the Capitol here in Richmond, Virginia. We proudly announced, together with Governor McLeaf, Chuanli is going to invest two billion U.S. dollar in Chesterfield County, Virginia, to build the world world's best manufacturing center to apply this ingenious technology from Shandong Chuanli. And we're going to create 2,000 direct jobs and then many times more indirect jobs. It's been, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's not an easy job. It's been a race against time ever since I started this, this project. On one side, we have so many problems we need to fix on, on, the, on the earth. On the other side, in the U.S., for several decades, nobody has built a paper and a pop project at this magnitude, at this scale. So it's scary to many industry experts and, uh, and plus, this is uh, all new technology. So it's been constantly a test of my faith. I often say to my wife, if I wake up in the morning and there is no surprise, that's a real big surprise. <laughs> this photo was taken in front of the governor's mansion. That was one of the special days. We had a group of leaders and friends gathered. This is a highlight, but it only represents probably less than 1% of the great people in this community who have been advising us, coaching us, hand-holding us, and really helping us to make this happen. When I came to to U.S. two and a half years ago, now actually three and a half years ago, I barely knew anyone in Virginia except uh, some friends and Darling and UVA. So all these are new friends. Probably, I think it's safe to say, at least 1,000 friends helped us in this process. I said, it's a race against time. We got many things down. We did all the legal, environmental, you know, uh, due diligence. We started on the labor law and the various things. In October 2015, we had the groundbreaking ceremony. And more than 400 leaders and friends from near and far gathered at our site to celebrate that special day. And this is a picture of our ever-growing team. We have been exceptionally blessed to be able to attract many exceptionally talented and passionate people, both internal with our team and also external partners. Just very recently, we partnered with Jacobs Engineering, arguably the best paper and pulp industry engineering firm in the world to help us with the environmental permitting process. This highlights the whole process, and we call it the vastly golden circle. Now we turn the straw from a post-harvest field west. In China alone, every year there are more than 900 million metric tons of straw available and most of them are burned to ashes by the farmer to leave room for the new plants to grow for next season. Now, instead of being waste, we turn them into the best ever organic tissue and organic fertilizer. 
and the fiber was the problem for straw. Because in nature, it takes a ye more than a year for the fiber to break down. Now we take out the fiber to make tissue. So now we turn the, the residual. Typically, it's the toxic black liquor. Now we are able to convert that into humic acid-based organic fertilizer. It's like a highly accelerated and a highly catalyzed, we call super composting process. It goes back to the soil, help to restore the soil, help to restore black soil, and help the plants to develop a much stronger root system. And with all of that, we removed also the chemical bleaching process. Therefore, the clean water, literally, at our Shandong site, our wastewater is cleaner than the fresh water we take in from the river. So at every step, every day, we are going to make the earth better. So at Vasily, we proudly name this upcycling. And we want to see more industries and more companies doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. And being a green entrepreneur is not just hard work. It's also, you know, having a lot of fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> I became an overjoyed green farmer since I built my own organic veg garden in my backyard. Look at these gigantic zucchinis. <laughs> my wife bought just one pot of young plants with three young plants in the spring. And for the first season, we planted in our garden. We applied nothing but our very own vastly biostimulants. Then with the typical Virginia shower rain, after a few days, the small baby zucchinis boosted <laughs> into these gigantic monsters. <laughs> and we harvest dozens of these from that one port. And we also planted uh, several ports of uh, tomatoes and chili peppers. We har harvest hundreds of them. We ended up seeking out our neighbors, colleagues, and friends to give away. So the number one takeaway from my wife for next season was every plant matters. <laughs> Count your plants carefully. <laughs> it's been uh, extremely challenging but a rewarding journey. We can make this happen together. I want to invite all of you and each of you to join us to take this to our life for a better world and for the many generations to come. Thank you.